So for the guys that are not taking enough iodine in their diet, they might get an impaired T4 production. Again, you need a significant amount of iodine for adequate T4 production. Vigorous Steve here. I'm going to teach you guys how to get off thyroid medication because, well, summer is just around the corner and it means a lot of you guys are going to start dieting reasonably soon, perhaps using one of those bad Instagram fitness coaches who are going to put you on a ton of thyroid medications because, well, they need your before and after pictures to do their marketing for their Instagram page so they can scam the next guy out of their hard-earned money, right? It's a huge turnover of before and after pictures, people somehow magically getting shredded, and that's usually in combination with thyroid medication. Now, a lot of you guys are not going to continue with your bad fitness Instagram coach after you've reached your goals. So that means you're not going to know how to get off thyroid medication, but don't worry, Coach Steve, has your back, I'm going to teach you guys how to do that properly. Before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'm not just saying that, that really helps with the algorithm. The more you like and the more you comment, the more these videos get into the algorithm and get pushed to a new audience, including the guys who are overdoing their thyroid medications and perhaps experience metabolic damage after their diet is done, which is basically to do with, you know, poor thyroid conversion and poor thyroid production after you discontinue the T3. And that's what we're trying to prevent. So let me give you guys a little bit of basic human biology so you know what's actually going on in your body and how to prevent all of these nasty things from occurring when you discontinue the T3. The thyroid gland, which is located right here around your voice box, produces thyroxine T4, a thyroxine-based hormone containing four iodine atoms. Now, this is regulated by thyroid stimulating hormone, which is secreted by the pituitary gland in response to circulating thyroid levels, both the triodothyronine being the T3 and the thyroxine T4 concentrations within your bloodstream. So this is a self-regulatory process through uh, the endocrine system, but circulating T3 concentrations play a more regulatory role in thyroid stimulating hormone secretion than T4 concentrations. So for the guys that are not taking enough iodine in their diet, they might get an impaired T4 production. Again, you need a significant amount of iodine for adequate T4 production for them to be converted through the deiodinase enzymes. There's three different kinds. Their names are Hank, Wayne, and John. Actually, that's not true at all. They're just called the deiodinase type 1, 2, and 3 enzymes, numbered with Roman numerals. These three different isoforms of the deiodinase enzymes help to metabolize one iodine atom of the thyroxine from the tyrosine-based hormone and convert that into triodothyronine. So, as the name implies, T4 has four iodine atoms and T3 has three iodine atoms, making it metabolically active. T3 is what helps to regulate your metabolism, helps to convert uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats for your overall metabolic rate. Of course, there's many different hormones which actually play into your metabolism, but T3 is one of the predominant hormones which helps with the conversion and the nutrient partitioning for you to basically convert one molecule into another molecule, making a dietary molecule into a human, a biologically active molecule. So this is how you have to look at it. When you start supplementing with T4, you're complementing your natural T4 production. That's why when you supplement with T4 up until 100 micrograms, maybe even 150 micrograms per day, you see that your natural T4 production and your thyroid stimulating hormone are not really affected. But that's in cases of people who are otherwise healthy. So if you suffer from Hashimoto's disease or another issue with your thyroid gland or pituitary gland, you might see that these thyroid hormones, the T3 and the T4, or perhaps thyroid stimulating hormones, are completely off the scale. Uh, what you would see with Hashimoto's disease, for example, where the TSH levels are super high, resulting in a very high burden on the thyroid gland, potentially leading into thyroid cancer later on in life, because T4 and T3 levels are not sufficient. You see this in cases with goiter, which is called uh, caused by an iodine deficiency. If you're not getting enough iodine in your diet, you don't get the building blocks for adequate T4 production then that results in you not having adequate T3 levels in your body, resulting in a very high thyroid stimulating hormone level. And this is actually how the thyroid gland starts to grow over time. Now, nowadays, you know, they have iodized salts. 
you can take kelp. There's other sources of iodine. Iodine is often included in many of the uh, general multivitamins supplements that are out there nowadays. So it's a little bit difficult, I would say, to get an iodine deficiency, but still in, in some of the developing countries that might still occur. So there's a couple different hormones and a couple different nutrients which are involved with normal and healthy thyroid production, one of them being iodine. You can supplement that in, then that covers the you know normal production of T4, but T4 needs to be converted into T3, right, by the deiodinase enzymes. Those contain selenium. So it's also very important that you get adequate amounts of selenium in your diet for these three isoforms of the deiodinase enzymes to function correctly and convert T4 into T3 for normal serum concentrations. Now, selenium is very present in um, animal meat sources. So as long as you're eating a you know basic bro diet of high protein intake with beef and eggs and salmon and other white fish, and chicken, feel free to supplement with selenium, let's say 100 micrograms to 200 micrograms per day on top of your diet that should get you around 300 to 500 or maybe even 600 micrograms of selenium per day. You don't need to supplement an additional 800 micrograms selenium per day, even though that's good for semen volume and um, basically making it rain in the bedroom. But then again, high dose and chronic intake of selenium, either through supplementation or eating an excess of Brazil nuts over longer periods of time, because keep in mind, one Brazil nut already contains, what is it, 90 micrograms of selenium, depending on the soil that it's grown in, because selenium content of food is highly soil dependent. So if you have um, chronic selenium intake, it might cause all kinds of deleterious effects on your body, either acutely or long-term. So keep that in mind, you don't want to overdo the selenium, you just want to stay within optimal levels which is anywhere between 200 micrograms to 800 micrograms, depending on your goals and aspirations. Okay, so that's basically what you're going to need for normal and healthy thyroid function. It's also important to note that vitamin K, K1, K2, MK4, and MK7 also play a contributing role in thyroid production. So if you're supplementing or taking a food source that is, um, you know, has plenty of iodine, selenium, and vitamin K, perhaps a vitamin K complex like Gero Formulas, for example, I'll list all of my supplement recommendations down below in the description section and in the comment section. If you're supplementing with that and you're um, you know, not eating like an asshole, sort of say, then your metabolic rate and your thyroid function should be normal, right? Excluding particular medical conditions. Now, as you start dieting, what a lot of people don't really understand, it seems, is that they need to supplement with iodine, selenium, and vitamin K, right? Because these three um, vitamins and, and minerals you're going to need for normal thyroid function. So if you're starting to take nutrients away or calories away from your diet, you're slowly getting into a micronutrient deficient state. This is why I always tell everybody to stay on top of their micronutrients. Now, of course, that's not the full story. If you're um, excluding carbohydrates, your thyroid function and, and thyroid production goes down slightly. Your basal uh, metabolic rate and basal body temperature is going to go down the longer you restrict calories and uh, food in general. So this is just a normal adaptive response, right? We're still dealing with our, you know, um, how to say this, like our, our primal uh, genetics that are, is going to regulate our metabolic rate. So there's a couple of ways around that, you know, a refeed over the weekend or cheat meals or increasing your cardio, or um, right, throwing in the fat burners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 